Hey guys, we're going to be talking about audio interfaces, specifically USB versus FireWire and just the general advantages that audio interfaces give you. Plugging an instrument into your computer has become a lot easier with the implementation of USB interfaces. We no longer need complicated mixing boards, preamps, signal processors, and what have you. Though you still do have those options, these interfaces make it possible to take an analog or MIDI instrument and plug it into your computer, have it played back or recorded in the DAW, such as Apple Logic or Avid Pro Tools. Historically, these analog to digital connections have been done through FireWire and more recently USB. The FireWire is made with a high data transfer buffer in mind and is more appropriate for this type of uh, connection. It's a lot more expensive to implement and computers are not putting them uh, on their hardware anymore. My iMac does have FireWire, but Apple themselves are moving away from FireWire uh, to Thunderbolt, which is, uh, which is an Intel uh, connection, but right now Thunderbolt type interfaces are a lot more expensive than either FireWire or uh, USB, so it's not practical at all for that. And uh, that kind of just leaves us with USB 3.0 being the fastest and the default sort of go-to that you'll see in these types of uh, these types of devices. Though that does bring the question of latency up because FireWire is the one go-to or was the go-to. That is technically the fastest connection, and that is because you will get the least amount of latency. So when I'm playing an instrument and it's playing back through these speakers or playing back through my headphones, uh, there's there's always going to be a few milliseconds of latency because it's going to take uh, a little bit of time for that information to, uh, to to take my electronic signal into the computer and turn it into a sound wave that I can hear. And the fact that FireWire is made with a high transfer buffer, it makes it so that the latency is extremely minimal. Now, USB 3.0, which is the current current USB at this moment, has adjusted to this kind of high data transfer and so it's a little bit better. Now though it's not as good as FireWire and most FireWire interfaces are going to be a little bit more expensive, you can add FireWire to your computer if you've got a, a PC uh, that doesn't have it. You can add an expansion card FireWire. But right now it's a bit late in the game to do that because Thunderbolt is being farther implemented. USB 3.0 and USB Type-C coming out pretty soon and FireWire kind of dying out, you really wouldn't be making that much of an investment. Now USB 3.0 is fast enough to get almost no latency and it's virtually no latency. When it's virtually, that means that you probably will not notice the latency, meaning that it, you will be able to record and so it's not that much of a problem anymore. Uh, FireWire versus USB has become negligible, so if you do want to get a FireWire interface, you have to remember that, again, it's not future-proof. Uh, probably even past this year. There isn't going to be very many devices with FireWire made on them. So if you do have one, then then use it. Uh, I have a Mac right now with FireWire inside of it, and I still didn't go for that as my main interface, interface choice because I also have a PC, and I'm also going to be moving around and doing uh, studio work somewhere else, and so I need to be able to use these devices everywhere, and I know that FireWire is not going to be everywhere. So USB has been the way to go and is going to be the way to go, and as it gets farther into the updates when you see USB Type-C come out and USB 4.0 probably, you'll see that these uh, the, it's going to make FireWire a, a huge, huge thing in the past. So there really isn't too big of a problem. So there's a lot of different types of audio interfaces out there. And at the very core, they do the exact same thing. They will take an analog or a digital instrument, and they will project it onto the computer, essentially taking you, being the middleman, in between you and the computer, and uh, making it possible so that you can hear yourself or record yourself. The difference between two interfaces is usually just going to be the features. One interface will not sound better than the other interface, rather the other interface will probably be built better or have more inputs or be you know a FireWire or Thunderbolt input, something that's a bit faster. Uh, there's never really a time where an interface will sound better. There'll be, you know, you'll sound better plugged into one interface uh, rather than another. You might enjoy one's interfaces preamp a little bit more. I know Focusrite makes some really good preamps inside of their interfaces, so that might be a preference that's completely subjective to you, but other than that, the 
the quality of the interface record intake is usually going to be the exact same. So when you're when you're shopping for an interface, usually you want to shop for the features that you want and you usually want to go for a company that you trust. The only way one interface can really be worse than another one is if it just didn't work at all. For a small home studio, if uh, if you're just by yourself and you maybe want to record yourself sometimes or you just want to use your computer as a, a mini amplifier because you know if you don't have a, a combo amp at home, if you have a bigger rig, so let's say in a rehearsal room, and you don't want to buy a smaller amp or if you just you know you want to be able to hear yourself and nobody else wants to hear you you know you, you can you can do all that inside of a computer and you can eliminate the use of an amp just by using an interface it also gives you a lot more features because if you're running something like logic or pro tools and you use the built-in amplifiers or built-in uh, built-in VSTs that they have for uh, for these these preamps that they have for bass and, and guitar and things like that. It's actually gonna you can add in presets, you can add in uh, compression and, and digital delay and reverb and all those different things that the, these combo amps probably won't be able to give you. And you can do all that inside of the the DAW itself, and you can record it. So it, it gives you a lot of uh, a lot of different versatility rather than just having an amp alone. It might be a little bit more expensive because you would have to buy the DAW. I mean, you could torrent it, but you you know, you have to add the cost of the DAW um, as, as well as the interface itself rather than just having an amp, but it, it can help if you want to go that route. Even if you have a gigantic studio and you have a lot of hardware, audio interfaces are definitely a, a way to go for those people as well because you might end up seeing that you're selling some of your hardware because these interfaces can do their jobs almost, you know, almost the same, if not better, because they are just that advanced now. And because it's possible to get some really high quality audio interfaces, you can get it to fit almost any need. If you do need to plug in with more than one person, let's say you need another guitarist at the same time, or you want to go live and have a singer go at the same time, there are interfaces that can accommodate that. If you want to plug in an entire drum set, there are interfaces that can accommodate that. And usually that is what's going to add to the cost of an interface rather than one's preamp being so much better than the other ones. Um, and so you really want to choose one that is that's specially suited for you. So if you guys have any question on interfaces or recording in general, ask me down below. Also follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook, uh, subscribe for any kind of future videos on this kind of stuff. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.